Well, these are 50 of my favorite debut albums that I have in my CD collection. And now I have to rank them. So I'll be back in probably two hours or so. <clears throat> Hi fans of high quality entertainment. Well, that took me uh, probably a good 20-25 minutes to sort through. And I just kind of did it, you know, if I did this again next week, it would be in a bit of a different order. You know, it's just how I'm feeling today. And just please realize uh, some of my favorites, <laughs> uh, favorite underrated albums, might not be yours. We're all different. Nobody's right, nobody's wrong. And if a certain debut album is missing, I either, I'm just have, using the ones that I actually own, that are in my CD collection. And maybe there's a reason I don't have one of your favorites in this list. So let's go through it. Number 50, the, the debut album from The Vibrators, Pure Mania. It's very catchy, punk pop, uh, short songs, and just a great fun listen. Number 49, when I was doing the ranking and reviewing of uh, Lou Reed's discography, I finally actually appreciated this. It's not as bad as... <laughs> people say it is. So it's number 49. Number 48. And he would get better with his later releases, but it's still a very strong debut album by Neil Young. Number 47. Joe Cocker with a little help from my friend. What a singer. And somebody named Jimmy Page plays on this, of course, and Nicky Hopkins, and Matthew Fisher, Steve Winwood, lots of great musicians. 50, 49. Number 46, one of my favorite American bands. A uh, couple of covers on this, but, you know, just starting out, great for a first debut album. Credence Clearwater Revival. Number 45, Deep Purple with Shades of Deep Purple. Pretty strong debut. 44, the first solo album from the ex-Genesis singer, Peter Gabriel. It was very, very impressive when this came out. It's like, he's going to do okay with his solo career, and he certainly has. 43, the debut album from Randy Newman. 42, this would probably be up higher for some of you, but I have other albums of theirs that I love a lot more, but it's still, you know, I, I enjoy it. The band, music from Big Pink. Number 41, the great debut album from 10CC. 40, a band that I just uh, got into in the last year or so, thanks to the CD exchange with Glenn Kellaway from the basement. Spirit and their debut album. 39. Yes, a female. Uh, Kate Bush, The Kick Inside. 38. The debut album from Roxy Music. 37. Barnstorm by Joe Walsh. Once again, thanks to the Glenn Calloway CD Exchange. I'd never heard this, you know, until the last year or so. 36, the first album by The Undertones. 35, Ian Hunter, once again, 
the CD exchange with Glenn Kellaway. I'd never heard this. And I never realized what a talent, like I knew he was talented, but I never realized what a great songwriter he was. And I definitely want to get more of his albums in the near future. 34, I've got both of their albums. Uh, I think I prefer this over the second one, but I still really enjoy the second one. It's the Claypool Lennon Delirium with Monolith, what is that? Monolith of Phobos. So good. 32, and I know this is going to be probably in the top, I'd say the top five for a lot of uh, viewers. But I, you know, I just don't relate to it as much as some of these other ones coming up. It is King Crimson in the Court of the Crimson King. It's an awesome album. I just have other ones that are, that I love more. 31. I bought this when it came out and I followed them, I think, their first, probably their first three albums and their live album. And then I kind of, they went a bit more commercial and I lost interest in them. But this is a very strong debut by The Tubes. 31, The Great, and he only had one solo album, Chris Squire, Fish Out of Water. I might be off by a number here, here or there. It gets a little confusing trying to keep track, but I believe this is number 30. The Great, debut album by Queen. I remember my brother buying this when it came out, and right away it was like, they're like Led Zeppelin. 29. And this, I, he did release an earlier album, but he doesn't, I think he, he was embarrassed by it, and he doesn't consider it as part of his discography. So out of respect to the artist, this is his true debut album. And it's awesome. David Bowie, also known as Space Audit. 28. Uh, definitely they, they were probably the ones to start this genre of music. It is Black Sabbath. Evil music. Scary music. 37 or so. Not one of Glenn's favorite bands. <laughs> Cloud 2, 347 Eastern Standard Time. Superb production on this. Uh, you know, they, they were blamed for trying to pretend to be the Beatles, but it was all a... It had nothing to do with the musicians themselves, I believe. It was just... Could have been done better, I guess, but... Ignoring all of that, it's a great album, and it does not really sound like the Beatles, except for Sub Rosa Subway, which kind of sounds like Paul McCartney a bit. 26. This band's whole discography, well, at least for the first few albums, is so strong. They're so underrated as an album's band. They're better known as having two or three big hits, but it's the debut album from Steppenwolf. 25. Uh, this is actually, uh, when it was on vinyl in 1969, it was a long vinyl record. I think it was like 25 minutes on each side. And back in the day, most albums were, I don't know, what, 15 to 20 minutes long on each side. So this is a very long album, and it's superb. It is Grand Funk Railroad with On Time. Not the greatest production, but <laughs> great song. Number 24 or so, The Mothers of Invention, Freak Out. 23, related to Frank Zapp in some ways, Captain Beefheart and his magic band, Safe as Milk. Number 22 or so, 
I love this when it first came out, Ramon. It's my favorite Ramon's album. Love the production on it, the, the, the vocals in the center, and the drums in the, I forget, drums in the center, and then the bass on one side and the guitar on the other side. And 21, what a great debut by Talking Heads. Yeah, I think I screwed up somewhere with the number, so I believe this is number 19. I just did a ranking and review of, of their albums. The Clash with their excellent debut album. Number 18, question, are we not men, we are Devo. See, an album like this, I don't think it would be on that many people's top 20 debuts, but it is for me. Number 17, punk, well, at least for the first album, kind of punk rock, really, really short tracks, lots of energy, and they would, uh, in the next two albums, they would kind of stretch that out a bit and be a bit more progress progressive and in very interesting, but this one is amazing. It's Wire's Pink Flag. 21 songs, <laughs> and some of them are, there's one song that's 20 seconds long, and there's some that are just a minute long. Number 16, love this first album of theirs. When their second album came out, I was really disappointed. I've even, you know, rec well, not recently, but maybe a year or two ago, I tried to see if maybe, you know, sometimes you change your mind about albums, and I still didn't really care for it, but this one is one of the great debuts. The Pretenders with Chrissy Hind. Number 15, once again from the Glenn Kelloway from the Basement uh, CD Exchange. I love all three albums by this artist, this band, and his earlier stuff. And I definitely want to look into more of his music. It is Kingdom Come, Arthur Brown's Kingdom Come with Galactic Zoo Dossier. I said it right this time. It is just so good. Number 14, what a songwriter. Uh, right now I've got, I think, 21 of his albums, and that's, <laughs> I'm still missing quite a few, but I'll be getting them all at some point. It's Elvis Costello with My Aim is True. Number 13, supposedly, and I believe him, Supposedly, this was mainly done all by himself. He produced it. He played all of the instruments. He's not a great musician compared to other band members for the band he was in. But this is so good. It is Elias of Sunhill by John Anderson. Beautiful album. Number 12. It's getting to the point where I'm no fun anymore. Me? No fun? I don't think so. <laughs> Crosby, Sills, and Nash. That's right. Great vocals on that. One of the, I think most people would agree, one of the great debuts of all time. Number 11. Yes, they are in my list. I was almost thinking they should be a little higher, but I'll go with Sparks. From, and, of course, it was first released as Half Nelson, the band Half Nelson, and it didn't sell. And so the, the manager, Albert uh, Grossman, Bob Dylan's manager, suggested the Sparks Brothers. And they didn't like that, but they decided on Sparks. And they re-released this as Sparks, and it still didn't sell. <laughs> but it is... Uh, so way ahead of its time. A song like Fa La Fa Li is like new wave back in the early 70s. Okay, the top 10. Drum roll, please. Number 10. This would be in a lot of people's top 10, I believe. And then there's other people that just don't get it, but, but I get it. It's the Velvet Underground and Nico. Produced by Andy Warhol, although he didn't really produce it.
But, you know, the story is, without, without Andy Warhol, they wouldn't have been making this record, so it was like a tribute to him. Number nine. Now these are all, well, even the ones I've shown before, they're all like perfect albums, most of them. And these are all A pluses, A plus plus plus, and they could interchange. It is John Lennon and the Plastic Ono Band, you know, excluding the uh, experimental albums with Yoko. This was his first true solo album, and Yeah, it's great. Number eight. Can't deny Van Morrison Astral Weeks. One of the greatest vocal performances ever is on this. Number seven. Pink Floyd, the Piper at the Gates of Dawn. Number six, once again, it wouldn't be on a lot of people's, maybe not even the top 50, but this is one that I've, I've played so many times throughout the years, I never ever get tired of it. In fact, their whole discography is, there's not a, a bad album in the mix. You know, some are better than others, but there's no, no bad albums to me. And this is the debut album from Blue Oyster Cult. The top five. Yes. Their debut album. So good. Uh, you know, I've read some, some people writing that they're, you know, they're finding their way. It's like, I think they found their way on this album. And Peter Banks' guitar work and everything is superb. And Time, time in a Word, the follow-up was, was just as good, so... Yes. Number four. Now this band only had their debut album, then that was it. <laughs> and thinking about it, none of them are even close to my favorite musicians. And uh, two of them had pretty big solo careers, but I never really got into their solo careers. But this album is absolutely one of my favorite albums of all time. It is Blind Faith. With Steve Winwood and Ginger Baker, Rick Gretsch, and uh, Eric Clapton. We're down to the top three. Ooh. Number three, The Doors. One of the greatest debut albums ever. Don't you disagree with me? And number two could almost be number one, because without them, I wouldn't be showing you these other albums, probably. It is the Beatles with Please Please Me. And yes, half of the songs are cover versions. I don't care. This was uh, when a band started writing their own songs, and I don't know. I just, you know, <laughs> I just don't want to argue about it. It's number two, okay? Don't argue with me. And it could be number one. So what what do I have as the number one? What's what have I not shown? It is. And some people won't like this, I don't care. <laughs> Led Zeppelin. Yes, even though they they ripped off some artist and whatever. I don't care. This is a amazing debut album. And for me, the greatest debut album of them all. So there you go. I would love your thoughts. Uh, like what, what was missing in my top 50? And what did I rank too high? And what did I rank too low? Even though, like I said, it's just my, my own personal opinion. Nobody's right, nobody's wrong. But... Uh, I'd love your thoughts in the comment section below. Thanks for watching. Have a great day. Bye.